Welcome to my pub and today for an experiment, the longest experiment we've ever done at Sorted. It's taken me 10 weeks to get this far. I have brewed my own beer with the help of some yeast. Scout's Honour is off the tap and you guys have helped name my new one, Sprig of Hop. And I've got three punters to come and try it. Already I don't like the fact that this is an experiment and this could just burn all of our insides. Now, the thing is, caveats up front, this is the first time I've ever done home brew. I did very much a starter kit, like Dummy's Guide to Brewing. But I think we've ended up with something that's all right. It's an American IPA. Okay. Okay. Good start. So let's see if we've got any fears. Wow. Now that, people, don't taste it yet. We'll get a few more on the go. When you pour home brew, you're supposed to do it in one go because you don't want to disturb the sediment in the bottom. It's got a good head on it. Good head, good bubble. I was being sarcastic. <laughs> that's not half bad. That's really not bad. That's really good. For something that didn't have too many bubbles in it, it's quite, like, it's got a fizz, isn't it? It has got a fizz on the tongue. Yeah, but so does mould. <laughs> so I would say, tasting it, it doesn't taste too strong, sort of alcoholic-wise. Do you know what percentage it is? Ah, so there's a very, very simple way of identifying if something is, or the alcohol percentage. Yeah. I'm not sure they normally use a vase, but uh, it's the best thing I can use to demonstrate. <laughs> You need to take the specific gravity and then work a quick calculation out. So basically, it bounces up and down. The problem is you need to do that before you ferment it and after. And I started this 10 weeks ago, but forgot the first bit. So I have no idea how strong this is because all I can take is the specific gravitation now. of the finished right. brew. But it is science week and at least you know the science in theory you just didn't apply it practically. <laughs> I didn't do my research 10 weeks ago when I started. But it's pretty simple to make. I literally just followed a step-by-step -step guide and it looks something like this. Given that beer has been made for centuries, I'm amazed that I need to sterilise everything because I can't imagine they ever did. But I'm going to follow the instructions. Next up, the malt. Now, by using basically this Cheetah's starter brewing pack, it means I haven't had to worry about the grain and putting all that out. This just becomes, when it's diluted with water, the wort that the yeast will then feed off. So it's got all the sugar in it. It smells incredible. If you like marmite grainy, brewery, beery kind of flavours. I do. Sterilise tick, malt, really just one water tick. Add brewing sugar, dissolve, and then top up to 20 litres. I mean, there's no line, it smells like a brewery. Apparently, two minutes of vigorous stirring, aka oxygenisation. Oxygenating. Oxygenation. Oxygenating. When the temperature is below 25 degrees, and that's important, otherwise it will kill it, then we stir in the yeast, secure the lid, fit the airlock, and fill with water. Oh, fill the airlock with water. Easy. Now, it goes without saying, that is going to get spotted. I have to find it. Only problem is the studio's got to stay at a pretty level temperature at the moment. It's even 21 degrees. I wonder if I can keep it there. I then had to mix it up and keep it stashed away at a pretty constant temperature, of about 20 degrees Celsius for two weeks. Which is why, if you remember, there was two weeks a while back where I was running around the studio turning off radiators and opening windows. I felt it was more important to look after my yeast than it was your own productivity in the studio. So, it turns out, trying to keep a secret in this place is possible, but not very. Um, towards the end of the brewing segment, most people in the office were fully aware of it. Um, it's been underneath there, it's been under, hidden away, and I would attend to it when you guys had gone home. Questions. You'd be like, in the back there, editing, and all you'd hear is, Hi guys, so, uh, this is where I've got to with the yeast. Um, it's going pretty well. Uh, as you can see, it's got a lovely little bubble on there. Wait, wait, wait the eyes are going. Yeah, and more yeah, eyebrows. Yeah, the eyes are going. Eyes have to go up to the side. Mm, lovely little bubble. <laughs> <laughs> After three days, we have some progress. Lots of bubbles. Go. 
Now that reading was there, which according to this looks good. Okay, we've had a weekend. I need to check the gravity again. If it's the same as 48 hours ago or before the weekend, we're good for the next stage. 100 grams of hot pellets. They go in here. And apparently we don't stir it. We just leave it. And then I had to then I had to obviously tap it all off. Uh, into the bottles and then they've been in the at, at room temperature for another couple of weeks instead of because it's incredibly cloudy and what it does is it settles and the yeast carry on a second ferment with a little bit of sugar in the bottom second ferment that carbonates it but it also sort of filters it and makes it clear and then another week or so in the fridge at a much cooler or a cellar um, at a much cooler temperature and now we've got about three months on this but what you're left with is a nice clear beer but the sediments in the bottom so the most important ingredient in beer, I think, is yeast. Without it, you just have malty, hoppy water, which is called wort, and wort is not a very nice word. Add yeast, you end up with beer. Beer is a much nicer word. What the yeast do is then they start to eat all the sugars that we had in the malt syrup, eat. They convert it into energy to keep them alive, but the kind of byproduct is alcohol or ethanol, and that is what obviously gives it kind of its alcohol content, and that's what makes your mind go a little bit funny, because it's a poison, it's a toxic. Toxin? Toxin. It's a toxin, and it also gives off some carbon dioxide, and that's what gives it the gas and the, the carbonation, um, which you can feel fizzing on your tongue. There are well over 300 types of yeast naturally occurring in all sorts of places, on fruit, in the air, that's what makes sourdough so good. Yeah. On your body, in particularly sort of moist places, uh, that's what yeast likes. So you have yeasty parts, and sometimes you can get treatment for that. They are natural <laughs> yeasts. However, brewer's yeast is a domesticated yeast, and it's particularly uh, domesticated and formed for both its function and for its flavour. But the crazy thing that I cannot get my head around is in that five gallon thing, there were hundreds of billions of living yeast cells undertaking literally trillions of reactions every second. Get your head around that. Ben, can we bring some of your beer to my Big Night Inn? When are you doing a Big Night Inn, Jamie? On Sunday. I like the idea of that. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, do you know what, guys? What? I'm gonna do this. What? Brownie point. Yes! Whoa! I would have to agree. It was probably the yeah. longest video. I'm, I'm, thank you. Yeah. I'm chuffed with the results. I'm going to say this is quite strong because that has... It's making my left eye hurt. <laughs> <laughs> click on the left if you missed our last video or click on the right video for one of our favourites.